High octane thrills there from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The new superhero miniseries has just dropped, as the kids say, on Disney+. Plus. It picks up from where the Avengers movies left off, but can it hold a candle? It'd be something more high tech than a candle, wouldn't it be? To these massive blockbusters. Eli is here with his take. <laughs> so, so Falcon Eli doesn't have a candle. Falcon has some like LED thing that pops out of his suit that Tony Stark designed for him that's better than anything we can imagine. You see? That's that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> Eli's here with his opposable action figures behind him on the wall. Yesterday yep. you were talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now we're back to the Marvel Universe. So how does Falcon and the Winter Soldier compare? Well, John, it's an exercise in contrast. Now, I've only seen the first episode, but it's clear this new Marvel TV series is really taking its time. This is a slow burn as we get to see and get to know, once again, Bucky Barnes, a.k.a. the Winter Soldier, and Falcon, or Sam Wilson, in action. And there he is. And this all comes after the events of Avengers Endgame. Now, you see him with Captain America's shield that begins with a very heavy moment, because you may recall, at the end of the events of Avengers uh, Endgame, Captain America gave Falcon his shield. But as we learn in the beginning of this new series, he's, he's not quite ready to wield it. Let's take a look. Symbols are nothing without the women and men that give them meaning. We need someone to inspire us again. more complicated now. Now, you know, it's interesting. You look at the series WandaVision, and this dealt in part with trauma and the Scarlet Witch really struggling with losing the love of her light vision. The world of Falcon and the Winter Soldier is a very troubled, unstable place. People are still readjusting to life, returning to normal after the blip. Now, that was the time between Avengers Infinity War and Endgame when half the world blipped away. Now, most are back but Iron Man and Captain America are gone. And meanwhile, there's new radicals, terrorist networks creating chaos. Now, what I appreciate isn't just the stunt work of, yes, we saw Falcon flying into battle, but Anthony Mackie as Sam trying to save the day with his sister's business, bringing the flying man back down to earth. These small scale struggles of a black family just, you know, fighting for a bank loan. And then we have Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes. Now, this guy. He's walking wounded. He is broken. We actually see him in therapy, still trying to kind of come to terms with the various lives he snuffed out when he was under mind control. And it's a bit of a struggle, John. OK, that's you've already covered a tremendous amount of territory, but this is a miniseries. So there's more. Mm. Episode one is all we've seen so far. What are your thoughts? I mean, I, I, I think it's promising, certainly promising. I think the idea of symbols and what does it mean to be Captain America? What does it mean to pick up that shield? There's some real interesting hints that they're gonna be kind of exploring that and kind of the baggage that comes with that kind of symbolism. I also think the chemistry between the gruff Bucky and the more kind of nonchalant, easygoing Sam will get better as things go. And let me show you a little preview from some future episodes. Let's take a look. Oh, I don't trust Red Wing. You Hold on a minute. You don't have to trust Red Wing. But I'm going to go see if he's right. Because I have a feeling they might be a part of the big three. What big three? The big three. What big three? Androids, aliens, and wizards. That's not a thing. That, that's definitely a thing. No, it's not. So every time we fight, we fight one of the three. So who are you fighting now, Gandalf? How do you know about Gandalf? I read The Hobbit in 1937. <laughs> in 1937. The thing about Bucky Barnes, he's kind of like Captain America. He's a man from another time. He's just grumpier. <laughs> he's just got a different kind of disposition. Now, online, John, I wrote about how superheroes are shifting to the small screen. And it's been an interesting adaptation. You look at WandaVision, Justice League, and now Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We're really becoming used to these weekly installments of small screen superhero action. I do miss those kind of blockbuster moments, the sound, the theater made. I mean, I remember the roar 
when Captain America picked up Thor's hammer. But with TV, there's, you know, this six-part series. You can get to you know these characters. We can take our time from the comfort of our couch. And it's becoming a ritual, I think, for a lot of people. And with reports that Marvel is spending $25 million an episode, it's kind of like you're getting the best of both worlds. So, for Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I think it's a promising start. I'm going to give it three and a half stars out of five. Androids, aliens, and wizards. Thanks, Eli. <laughs> yeah, awesome.